since like uh, we are making use of like uh, since this is a global uh, lab view architect and submit and then many people are actually joining from all over the place uh, i try to keep it as basic to like uh, you know progress forward and then the strategy what design pattern you should use what to decide and everything okay? so if you look into the state machine this is the like a simplest uh, design pattern you can think about it uh, it's pulling in nature which basically means like it runs continuously continually or okay, in particular interval and has a single loop uh, one of the example is if you need to acquire certain data or perform some calculation continually uh, you are going to use a uh, state machine okay but the limitation of this one is like the response depends on the loop speed for example let's say like you have a longer delay or a shorter delay like the longer delay will cause you to like uh, you know wait for the next iteration for the application to execute uh, the next iteration to execute while if you have a shorter delay it can use a lot of resources in the system okay that's how like uh, you can miss the user input for example if i press stop now right now and if i have a delay of like one second then it will not stop immediately it can take up to maximum of one second for that code to execute. Uh, the next one is like a step machine with event so uh, this design pattern is like a quite popular when you don't want to acquire the data or perform the calculation continually but you want to perform the calculation or something on demand let's say like i press something and then something will happen in that kind of scenario i would go with this kind of design pattern and uh, this is very very good when uh, the responsiveness is a priority okay uh, and uh, it does not need to run all the time this kind of design pattern slips continuously there are many ways to handle different kind of events uh, which is like out of the scope of this presentation okay uh, the limitation of this is like uh, this is non not sequential for example let's say like uh, you want to automate certain kind of process one after another and everything uh, you cannot do with the machine and events which you can do with this machine and you cannot use it for the pulling of the code as well so this is another limitation. So if I think uh, uh, the two scenarios initially, like the state machine and state machine with events, are really useful when you have to use the event and pulling separately. Now, like uh, we'll come into like something called producer consumer data. So this is basically a kind of a loop, like a two loop way. So it is becoming like a little bit more uh, complex. So here, yeah, like what it does is like uh, the two, like a two different. Uh, responsibilities the first one is going to acquire the data or like uh, do certain tasks and provide the instruction for the another loop to process that okay this is very very useful if you want to like uh, separate the high intensive code with like a uh, low intensive code okay for example uh, if you look into this one this is from the template but like uh, you will uh, get an idea so this loop is going to run continuously all the time uh, in the interval of 125 milliseconds while the bottom loop will execute only when you want it okay based on like a whenever you are going to make use of that MQ element. Similarly, like a producer consumer loop is actually with events is very, very like a very popular and very powerful design pattern uh, because like a, it takes the scalability to the next level and you can actually overcome the limitations of both the state machine as well as the state machine with events, okay? Because it can support both the polling code as well as the event type of code together, okay? And uh, this is like uh, this is going to use a little bit a complex part of something called like a messaging technique, uh, which is uh, being used uh, by queues by sending the comment and data from producer from this loop whenever the event is triggered and passed to the another one. Okay. Again, like uh, this design pattern, like uh, regardless of this one, this design pattern is very very useful if you want the user interface not to you know like uh, run continuously. Okay, you just wait for the user, and only when the user wants the code to run but you still have the capacity to run this code in like a, you know in sequence okay? like this state machine you can make this loop to run as a state machine as well by entering within itself now another thing is like a producer consumer loop ha is scalable although but like uh, if you want to make it more scalable and everything you have to create a lot of queues and all that kind of stuff and everything that is where like a I had introduced uh, the framework or like a cube message handler which is actually like a scalable version of the produce consumer loop with events itself. Uh, it provides you the template as well as the API. So if you see like there are like uh, messaging APIs and everything, which can be used to like uh, create queues, destroy queues, uh, events and everything. Uh, so you can actually like, uh, you know, like add as many loops as you can more faster. Okay. But like uh, you can still like uh, reach to this step using the produce consumer loop with events as well. But like uh, this is more scalable because like it is already providing you with some libraries 
and uh, like uh, some functional code even at the start. Now, actor framework, like uh, I think like uh, many of you have already seen this one. We have seen some of the presentations already. So uh, you are going to go with the actor framework when like uh, you have a dynamic number of parallel operations, clones you want it to be executed. Uh, so these are the independently running VIs, which are called actors. The main difference between the QMH and actor is like uh, the QMH will always have the fixed number of loops running in the beginning uh, during the compilation time. While actor framework can like, uh, you know, create like a multiple, uh, you know, like uh, uh, instances or the clones of the parallel process, uh, processes as well. So the extensibility and then scalability is like a very high. And then like, uh, this is the highest uh, like uh, extensibility and scalability we have seen ever in lab. So uh, like, uh, let's look like uh, how we can fix the previous scenarios. So <laughs> this is what like I would uh, recommend uh, the customers like I would come with the code on the left hand side. I would recommend them to use the QMH in this scenario, just like uh, separate the processes and have like a proper communication mechanisms to handle the issues. Uh, the next one, I would uh, refer them to use the state machine. Okay. Uh, one of the main reasons is like, although like uh, the code requires only the sequential operation, using the state machine will give you like a uh, two benefits. One thing is like uh, it is going to use like a less space, which makes your code more uh, readable. And another thing is like, if you want to make some changes or add new functionalities, or let's say you want to split out the processes in the application, uh, you can do so as well, very easily. And uh, uh, the third and fourth scenario, like I would suggest them to use the PC or QMH. It's up to them. If you have uh, smaller loops, like uh, you can still go with the PC, but if you are comfortable with the QMH, you can still go with the QMH as well, okay? So again, like uh, there will be like a slight uh, learning curves will be there.